Hello viewers, Super GT here. Formula One career mode is back, round number three. Now it turns out that I'm actually already out of date because I chose Force India and now they're actually called Racing Point Force India. So I'm actually out of date already. Authenticity, zero out of ten. Anyway, we're going to go for some upgrades. R&D is obviously very important in this game. If you stand still in Formula One, it's akin to moving backwards. So we're going to develop some aero. I feel like aero is one of the weaker sides of the Force India. Force India seems to be good in a straight line. It's got the Mercedes power unit. So straight line speed isn't often a problem. I suppose aerodynamics and maybe just all round durability would be the main issues that that um, you face at racing point Force India. Either that or uh, a teammate ramming you off. That does often also happen at Racing Point Force India. So we're going to develop some aero here and we've reached the capacity already. Obviously going for the efficiency uh, point or ratings there as well. Because obviously if you're going to start developing you might as well buy the, the efficiency thing straight away. And we're also going to develop the powertrain a little bit. So that's going to improve our rating hopefully on this chart. So we're going to sort of break towards that little group of the Haas and the Renault maybe get away hopefully from the Toro Rosso. Williams and Sauber. So practice. Basically, I did I did things. Stuff happened, and then I finished sixth in the end. Yada yada yada. You don't need to see all of that. So here we go then. Qualifying. Now qualifying. Actually, let's have. That's the look of a man who is is in absolute control. He's dominated the first two races of our championship so far. Kimi Raikkonen smashing it thus far. Okay then, Q1 on the brink here in 16th. So we went for our first run, which we just saw the end of, and then we went for our second run, coming across the line, just about getting into Q2 with 15th. So, a random view of some Mercedes engineers for no reason. So just scraping through. Now this Q number, uh, Q number two. That sounded weird. So, again sitting in 14, quite close to the cusp, across the line. We're going to have a look at the whole lap here. Let's see if I can improve upon my position. Turn one is really difficult around here. Really long, tightening radius corner blends into turn two and then you kind of just got to not bother breaking for turn three because you just it just guaranteed lock up it's like 100 percent chance of lock up if you even touch the brake even one percent of application down towards turn number six breaking just before the 100 board we get in there okay Pop tires kind of squealing a little bit now this is the section where you can really gain against the opponents they're really flying through this one and then kind of take a tight or sort of a wide entry into this turn, just turning it after that sort of tarmac pathway on the right hand side through turns 9 and then 10. Up towards 11, breaking just before the 100 board, spotting it there. It's actually deceivingly sharp this corner, actually locking up the inside left and uh, going on a little bit further than I would have liked. Through turn 13, very long corner onto the back straight onto this straight which goes on seemingly forever and then breaking just before the 100 board in we go nicely done down to second gear slowest corner on the circuit i think and then up towards the final turn qualifying is complete this is my last opportunity i won't get another lap drs just before the line there it is p9 i'm just about going to get through into q3 that is a good lap delivered right at the crucial moment so Q3 then, or Q number three, as I like to say. And in typical, I suppose, Force India fashion, I'm only just going to do one run. And you can see it was kind of a disappointing lap, only it's good enough for 10. great qualifying session for you. Are you going to carry that momentum into the race? Well, I hope not. I hope actually I finish 20th. My aim is actually to ram everyone off and finish last. Well done. That was a good qualifying performance. Yeah, too right, Emma. Any chance of uh, a pay rise at this point? 
this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. Kimi Raikkonen's perfect lap yesterday sees him start from pole position, with Sebastian Vettel starting alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Verstappen, Nico Hülkenberg and Magnussen, Sainz, Alonso, Grosjean and Brown. Bottas, Ricardo, Sergio Perez and Leclerc, Hartley, Gasly, Lance Stroll and Stoffel van Dorn. They've taken a grid penalty. Ericsson and Sergei Sorotkin rounds off the grid. Okay, so there was the grid. Here we go. I'm in amongst some of the big boys. Bottas and Ricardo right behind. Five, light, five lights are out now. Away we go from our grid slot of 10th place. Got the inside line. Bottas is just on my left hand side, there's actually contact there, driver waving furiously, actually with Ricardo into turn two, actually just going up the inside of Grosjean, I'm going to have to leave him space on the left hand side, I can see his red arrow, he is there somewhat, there he is, we're going to ride on board with Roman Grosjean, and he's actually just got ahead, really getting a good launch, I'm going to send one up the inside though, lick the stamp, and into turn four, sorry into turn six, unceremoniously running wide and uh, Ricardo follows me through Grosjean losing out two positions there just by being a little bit lackadaisical not really going for a defensive line perhaps could have done now up behind Carlos Sainz up in ninth I've gained one position so Rogue Row has, uh, has lost out and I've gone up into ninth so our first race we finished in sixth place naturally last, uh, last race at Bahrain finished 14th so averaging 10th, I suppose. But uh, I think if we can just scrape the points each race, or most races, then I think we've done a good job. They're, they're only expecting 14th out of me. So not really expecting too much at this early stage. I'm, I suppose, a rookie driver. Down the long back straight. Into the final corner. Sight on the outside. Leaves plenty of space. And I'm late on the brakes. The space was there. And I've gone through up into 8th. So, okay, it's going so well. It's going well so far. Those early days, Kimi Räikkönen is smashing it uh, on pole position. He's won the first two races of the season. Quite how this has happened, I don't know. The Iceman has got his mojo back, and uh, he's pulled it for the third race, and he's uh, he's leading away from the front. So turn two here, really difficult to get right, really easy to lock up as you as you go through there. It's kind of better to break. It's better sl to slow down by just coasting, just lifting off the throttle and it kind of does it itself in this very light application of the brake. Turn 6 and again, we've got Carlos Sainz all over us so we did go past him but the Renault is technically the faster car at this current stage of the season and uh, it looks like he's got really good drive off turn 6 into turn 7. This is where I kind of feel as though I was strong against the AI, against my opponents. You see they're taking a wide line but uh, I can see every time I was on the Delta comparing myself to uh, what they wanted in the practice programs. I, I was always guessing ahead through turn seven and eight. So that corner seems to be uh, one that was my, one of my strengths for this track. Although I would say on the whole, this circuit isn't one of my good circuits. Neither was Bahrain. But then again, I suppose none of the tracks are really my strong circuit. I don't know which ones are, to be honest. I suppose we'll see as the as the season goes on. So again, Carlos Sainz behind. And whilst I was kind of busy fiddling with all my settings, I was actually a bit too busy forgetting about what was going on behind. So Carlos Sainz is actually going to come back through. Locking up on the inside, but he's going to get through. Getting that position back. Kind of cut across me. And I'm going to lose momentum. Actually lose the position to Daniel Ricciardo into the final turn. And I'm almost going to go into the back room. Just having to back out. And now Bottas is going to come through. So the big boys are actually are going to quite easily sweep past. They started just behind. And to be honest, well, they're probably going to beat me in the long run. So I'd rather just get it over and done with rather than defend against them for the entire race and lose 10 years worth of time. So Bottas and Ricardo both through. The Mercedes power unit, just absolutely ridiculous. The works engine, just so much better. So Jeff with some, some bad news, actually. We're going to lose power throughout this race so well obviously not good news because you just need as much power as you can get and if you start losing even five percent of power or anything it's just going to make make your life so much harder so here we go on lap number four 
and I mean this was meant to be my strong corner is I suppose my strong corner in drifting as I almost lose a position then to Van Dorn I do temporarily get it back though so up into eighth but at this moment only because a couple of people have pitted I think I left it one lap too long to go into the pit and you see I'm struggling for grip Van Dorn sweeps to the right hand side and I'm going to go flying past up the inside into the pit lane obviously I didn't have to break as early as he did as he was taking the normal racing line I'm not sure if that's actually quite legal don't get a penalty for it though so I've taken my pit stop at the end of lap four beginning of five and away we go onto the soft tyre so we're going to go right down to the back of the pack down to 20th so it looks like a quite bad move at the stage but uh, we're going to go on to fresh tyres I should be able to drive a lot better now because those tyres just now were absolutely shot and I had like zero grip I was basically driving on ice uh, there was no chance of me kind of salvaging anything there so behind Grosjean at this point here and it looks like I'm going to be having a good battle with Grosjean throughout this race it seems like we qualified very close together and we're going to spend a lot of time together getting to know each other quite intimately as we go into turn seven so uh, a little bit later into the race lap six now catching up with uh, daddy's boy uh, Lance around the outside of turn number eight getting the job done so sweeping by him quite easily a uh, billion dollars can't save you now mate so we're going to sweep past him get away from him quite quite convincingly he can't keep up with that and uh, by lap number 10 this stint kind of went rather smoothly at this point here uh, catching up to Grosjean I think he got, kind of got caught up I was uh, maybe one or two seconds behind Grosjean and I think he was a little bit slower through the traffic sometimes the AI like to kind of sit behind or sit side by side for like 10 corners and lose like 10 seconds because they're so stupid into the back of Grosjean give him a nice little ram in the rear ends and lucky to not get any front wing damage as a result of that so onto the back of Grosjean literally and uh, now trying to get past Van Dorn look how slow Van Dorn is at this moment here Grosjean just can't really pick, pick away past at this current time so it's going to be interesting down this back straight we'll see how it goes so the the Shanghai International Circuit, 3.3 miles in, in length, 5.4 kilometers. Now that back straight is probably most of that circuit. The track actually opened in 2004 BC, actually. It dates back to ancient times, uh, believe it or not. They used, to, they used to race horses around here and then uh, kind of got found in an archaeological dig a couple of years ago and they started using it again for Formula One. Amazing, really. So up the inside of Van Dorn, easily on the DRS, DRS OP on this back straight. Up the inside of Grosjean as well. Is it going to be a double? It's kind of clumsy. You just about get through. Give him a car whip. And I've done the double. Gaining two positions. So the stint going well. Actually going to drive really wide. Way too wide. And Grosjean's just going to easily sweep back past. Back into 17th. So just judging by the map. There's, there's a fair big, fairly big group going through turn 3 and 4 right now. So we're maybe a couple of seconds behind. Maybe less than 10. Not too far at this current kind of stage. Up, back up the inside of Grosjean, leaving the space on the entry to turn number two, or the, the sort of the, the final section of turn two. And I get the job done back up into 17. Gap to Ericsson ahead, 4.3 seconds. Cheers, Jeff, once again. I'm just hoping, I'm not really sensing a lack of power at the moment. I can't quite sense it really. But I am kind of. Uh, using, I'm, I'm saving a lot of the ERS and rich fuel mode for the back straight. So down there, I'm not really feeling it too much. And of course, around the around the corner, you don't really need as much power. So at the moment, I sense that I'm okay in terms of power. But but you know, if if Jeff is going to say something, then he means it. He he doesn't say anything half-assed. It's with full conviction. And if he says that there's going to be some ICE wear, and I'm going to start slowing down, then it's going to happen. So I do need to pay attention to my speed. Coming down the back straight, you should be able to top out just over 100 miles, uh, sorry, 200 miles now, not 100. I'm gonna get to 100, uh, 198 actually this time around, actually sitting, just in setting two for now. We've still got 17 laps left to go, so I don't really wanna overuse the fuel right at this moment, just really picking my, ch my times to use it. Sometimes just using it as defensive method to keep the person behind behind. And then he's kind of telling me to actually use it. 
So by this point here, lap number 13, catching back up to another Williams uh, of Sergei Sorotkin. He's not actually going to hamper us at all. He's going to dive into the pit lane. So that's that's good. Actually, get a free DRS out as well. And here's Lewis Hamilton coming out of the pit lane. I'm just going to go past there, and Grosjean just about gets past. That is a pretty poor timing from the Mercedes boys, as uh, he comes out right behind a pair of midfield drivers. That's not obviously ideal for a Mercedes driver to have that happen. So poor timing from him. I'm not sure what he's what he's doing that low on the grid or sorry that low in the order at this point of the race so Hamilton outside the top 10 at this moment which is well it just doesn't happen does it doesn't really happen very often so through turn 9 through turn 10 onto this medium length back straight short to medium length back straight into into the left here's, here's the view of Hamilton behind actually sweeping around the outside of uh, Grosjean there and now I'm going to be the next victim onto this back straight. There's little I can do. You know, customer Mercedes engine against Mercedes works engine. Nothing you can do about that. He's just easily going to get through. And there's not much point of fighting Hamilton anyway. Max Verstappen here. He's going to add to the mix. Not quite what he's doing there, just cutting the grass, driving really slowly. I do not know. But uh, I'm up into 10th at this moment here. So sitting in a decent position. DRS off of Hamilton although I expect him to kind of fly away at this point at a rate of a couple of seconds per lap or just a, at least a second per lap. So then through turn one and into blends into a very long tightening turn two. A, a large portion of uh, soaring at the wheel mid-turn there. So we are ahead of Grosjean at the moment. We're in the points. We are going to have to pit again and we're going to do that right now as we go in. Sitting in ninth, down to 14th, 15th, leaving in 14th, 15th, 16th, okay, so down to 16th as a result of that pit stop. Up the inside of Ericsson, strong move, look at that, the hand, the hand wave of fury comes out, it has been unleashed. I think Ericsson hit me there, it was 100% Ericsson fault. And Sergio has had an absolutely awful start to the season. If Kimi Raikkonen is bossing it, if Kimi Raikkonen is bossing it, then Sergio uh, Perez is on the opposite end of the scale. And well, there he is on the left-hand side. So I'm up to 14th. So, okay. Cheers, Jeff. Yeah, I understand what a green flag is. Thank you. So through turn one, up behind Sorokin again. We found him. Found ourselves behind him. Almost into the back of him through the apex of two, and sweep down into three. And the AI, the AI sometimes get like this; they get a bit flustered when you get a bit close. And I'm easily going to go around his outside. The AI is set to 100. That's the difficulty I've been playing on. Gap up to 9.8. I'm going to have a look at the map here because I'm going through turn six, and there's a big group going through nine and ten now. Maybe one, two, three, four, five cars, and that's ideally where I need to be. So I need to get my well, I need to put my foot down, basically, my, my accelerator foot, and start catching up. Because if I want to get any points, I need to catch up with that group and start overtaking them. And at the beginning of the race, they suggested a two or a three lap, uh, sorry, a two or a three stop race. And I think maybe just the one stop is the way to go. I think one stop is actually overpowered. And I've gone for two here. And I think maybe one was perhaps the way to go. But if I can just get my, my move, my groove on here and start moving forwards, then, well, there's still a chance of points. They're coming through the final turn now. So that's kind of the gap I need to catch up with 10 laps left to go. Going defensive against Grosjean into the hairpin. He's going to go around the outside and he's done a really good job to kind of keep his foot in on the exit and stay alongside. So he's got the job done. That was a good move from Grosjean to go around the outside. And well, look at that. This is something that seems to happen a lot. I get overtaken and then I go into the back of that person who just overtook me because they kind of awkwardly slow down. So this is something I need to adapt to. Drivers just brake checking you at the next corner. Kind of annoying and it seems to be happening quite a lot. I do seem to lose 
quite a lot of front end downforce. So at this point here, unfortunately, we have the ICE damage and we have front wing damage. And that tire is that tire is screaming at me. That tire is telling me it does not like that turn. I think once as soon as you get some sliding going, the car makes some weird uh, so, sort of dripping noises. The tires kind of start screaming at you if you start sliding. So that group, I've actually caught up with that group. It's just, I have that front wing damage and I just have that uh, ICE damage. I don't think it's going to be enough. I think without those two things, I would be catching up in the same way that Grosjean was, or is. Grosjean is definitely catching. He's bridging that gap and he's going to be on them with a couple of laps left to go. There's still six more left to go. Brendan Hart is out. He's just gone, just gone past him. Up into 30. So I just need to gain three more positions to gain a point in this race. And unfortunately, well, you see actually Verstappen unlapping himself. I don't know what he was doing earlier. And you can hear it there, the gap ahead, 14 seconds. There's just no chance. There's only two laps left to go. At this point here, it's a defensive race, unfortunately, against Van Dorn. I suppose that's just the way that Formula 1 is sometimes. Uh, you know, sometimes you're going to be able to deliver to your potential in terms of your driver, sometimes the car as well. And sometimes it's not quite going to go to plan. You're going to have problems with the engine. You're going to get uh, grid penalties. You're going to get other penalties. You're going to get hit into. You're going to hit into the back of Grosjean. You're going to lose front wing end plates, whatever. So this seems to be one of those races where things just about didn't go my way. Although. On the whole, I was quite pleased with the performance so far. I think I drove quite well, and I think I definitely could have got points if not for that incident or, or the ICE kind of having a meltdown. You see just how slow I am now because Van Dorn easily sailed by on that very small straight, which is not often an overtaking opportunity. And we're going to see just how bad it is on this back straight because I'm going to go, I'm going to have the DRS, presumably. Let's see in just a moment. I'm going to go into overtake mode 4 in the ERS, which is the fast in the straight line. Thanks for the advice on that, guys. And down the back straight, you see just nowhere near. I just do not have the speed. I am going over 200 miles an hour, but that's with DRS. So definitely losing straight line speed and any chance, really, of a decent result here. At the end of the race, Kimi Raikkonen has made it three in a row. And I'm going to make it a disappointing that's result in the end. The 14th position. Kimi Raikkonen is smashing it right now. How is he doing it? Three three wins in a row for him. Wherever you go, anywhere in the world, the prancing horse flags are dominant in the grandstands and they're out in force again today. It's Ferrari on the top step once more. There he is. Look at him. What a boss. And somehow Bottas and Ricardo, they started just behind me on the grid and they actually came through to finish second and third. So they obviously had a really good race. So well done to them. But Kimi Raikkonen is walking it so far. 75 points out of 75. There are the results. Down in 14th. The, the team expects 14th from me. So I suppose I matched my expectation. But I think I definitely could have got points there. If not for a couple of uh, driver issues. Or car related issues. That is the championship so far. Sitting in 11th. Uh, courtesy of my points in Australia. So things are still going okay. I'm perhaps still punching above my weight. So looking towards the next round at Baku, I think, well, we'll see how it goes. It's not always the easiest circuit to race around. Of course, very narrow in, in many places. And of course, we do have that long back straight, so or main straight. So hopefully the straight line speed of Force India should be able to help us and propel us into a decent point scoring position. So... Going well so far in our third race of the championship and quite easily dominating this uh, this rivalry at the moment here with Sergio. Sergio is not having a good time. So so walking it this time around and getting a fair few uh, resource points. So you can see at the beginning of the, the video we spent a fair few of our resource points. Great work. That's exactly the kind of result I'm looking for. Keep it up. Are you sure about that? <laughs> so... Emma, Emma telling us that was a decent result, so I mean, I'll take it. I don't feel as though it was, but if that's all they expect, then okay. So it looks like we might have to sort of look at our engine components and our R&D. We're going to look at that in more detail in the future. 
So that's a look at the standing so far. Kimi Raikkonen smashing it. Do tune in for the next one, guys. If you did enjoy it, subscribe for more and hit the like button if you did like this video. I shall see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Listen.